Hello and welcome to CS230. This is lecture 14 and lesson 2. And in this particular lesson, I'm going to give you a brief overview of developing the ER model for our customers and addresses database. But we'll develop this database, a physical database, a little bit later in, in lesson 3. And in lesson 4, we look at how we can query and manipulate that database using PHP. And in lesson 5, we look at how we might um, do the same kind of work with Node.js. Right, so we're... we're um, in the last lesson, we looked at the key terminology. So we learned about entities, we learned about attributes, and we learned about keys. And But I mentioned um, relationships and weak and dependent entities as part of that discussion. We didn't really go into it in any detail. So before we look at the actual um, uh, ERD, the logical ERD that we're going to be working for our example database, we need to actually think and talk a little bit about relationships and cardinality. So relationships illustrate the association between two entities and are usually represented with some kind of straight line. And we can see an example of one down here in this particular diagram here. So we have an entity A, we have an entity B, and we have some kind of relationship. And remember that entity entities are kind of described as the nouns of the system and the relationships refer to the verbs in the system. So the actual ERD shows um, a third thing, um, okay, and it shows um, a cardinality rule. That, and these cardinality rules define the allowable counts of the relationships. For example, are, is the relationship between the entities one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-many, etc.? So, diagrammatically, we tend to show that using two indicators, okay, one that refers to the maximum cardinality, and we see something here, the maximum cardinality, and one that refers to the minimum cardinality. So, the maximum cardinality is often referred to as multiplicity, and if you're reading the textbooks, and if you're looking at um, textbooks again, you'll see sometimes they refer to uh, minimum cardinality as ordinality, optionality, or modality. And that's, um, so, um, First of all, the maximum cardinality, that describes the maximum number of times that an instance of one entity can relate to an instance of another entity. Okay, And then the minimum cardinality is the minimum number of times one instance uh, of an entity can be associated with an instance of the related entity. And that can be zero or one, so that's why it's often referred to as an optional or mandatory. Um, and so the combination of the two then is always in a specific order. Okay, so the, the place in the outside edge of the relationship, the symbol of the cardinality becomes first. We see here on the outside edge of this connection, and then the symbol indicating whether the ordinality or the relationship is shown after the cardinality symbol. And you can see that here in here. Okay. Okay, so there are lots of ways of defining in this, these, these, this is called a notation for describing the relationships, and there are many forms of that notation, for example. So there's um, the Chen notation, the original 1970s one, the UML, Unified Modeling Language, the Barker, the Arrow, the Crow's Foot, and IDEF1X notations. Okay, so but it doesn't matter which notation you use, like simply you'll see, see dots here, you'll see relationship as a diamond, you'll see all of these things, okay? And it doesn't really matter. Okay, what matters for us is that there are four possible edges to the relationship. There's going to be a zero or many, a one or many, a one and only one, and a zero or one. And for my like ERDs, well, in these lessons anyway, um, I'm going to be using the crow's foot notation to express the relationships um, as shown in this particular diagram here. So um, a multiplicity of one and a mandatory relationship is represented by a straight line perpendicular to the relationship line. And a multiplicity of many is represented by the three-pronged crow's foot symbol. Okay, so here's the crow's foot, and here's the line. Okay, multiplicity of one. Um, an optional representation is represented by this circle here. So I've shown the way we draw the maximum and the minimum cardinalities for each of them, and um, the grey is just, uh, you know, the, that's just um, to highlight the parts that we're interested in looking at, okay? So in that case, then, we have three common cardinal rela uh, relationships. They're one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. But here's an example using cross foot. So here's a one-to-one. -one. So a student may have one locker. Every student has one locker, and one locker is associated with one student, for example. A lecturer may give and have many courses, or, um, and a student may have and use um, and attend many courses. Okay, so we're interested in our customer address, developing our customer address, um, ERD. Okay, so some background for this. Okay, so we have, once we have the basics for creating these ERDs, we can we can think about this customer address database. And I'm going to use a really really brilliant example from a series of posts that were uh, from about four years ago um, in the maybe longer now, okay, in the uh, the database administrators Stack Overflow site. And if you're interested in databases, this is a great place to be. I mean, you've been there for JavaScript, I know, and PHP and so forth, okay? Um, and it's from some unknown user, we don't know who that person is, but they, they um, 
This is the link to their, their profile. Okay, it's really excellent reading, and, and I'd recommend it. It summarizes, you know, you could read lots and lots of books, but I'm, you know, have to be a bit mercenary in this particular module. You know, um, we can't go over everything um, from the beginning. Okay, so anyway, they, they use, they, and the one thing to note though is that the author indicates that they use a specific notation, the, the IDF1X standard, to generate their diagrams, okay? And um, in this particular diagram, uh, weak or dependent entities are represented by round corners on the rectangles. And we saw that in the previous, in the previous lesson. Um, and strong entities are just represented by a rectangle, okay? And uh, then this entity is normally divided into two parts, the upper part that gives you the primary key um, attributes and the lower part contains all the rest of the attributes, okay? And, um, and the name of the entity is usually associated above the, above the attributes, okay? Um, or sorry, above the entity itself, okay? Foreign keys are uh, labeled as FK, alternate keys are represented as AK, and PK represents the primary key field, okay? Now, the actual standard um, for IDEF1X actually uses circle uses solid and dashed lines with filled circles at one of both ends. It doesn't usually use crow's feet, okay? But the example that used in these particular um, uh, posts use crow's feet, but that's okay, okay? So so it's a it's a different kind of notation, okay? And, um, and but there's a nice cheat sheet for IDEF1X here. You can click through and get to that. And um, so and I'm going to be working with a limited number of entities from the example. Okay, so here's our here's here. This is again is the one we're interested in developing. You'll notice that here's this dependent um, uh, a weak entity here. It relies on the existence of a customer address before we can assign the two nice round corners, square corners for entities. I'm using crow's feet notation for the for the um, for the uh, cardinality rules, and you know we name the actual uh, relationships. But this doesn't come from nowhere. Okay, so we have some rules. So we have a logical layout here that comes from our essentially our conceptual model, and so it tells us that we need to have one table to keep the address information, one table to retain the customer specific details, and one table to contain the facts about the customers and their addresses. So for the relationship or the association between customer and address, there's a many to many cardinality ratio, you know, many to many, because, you know, a customer might keep um, multiple addresses over time or even simultaneously, and the same address could be shared by multiple customers, okay, right? Um, so you have to provide the, uh, you might also have a, a specific address to be used in several ways. For example, um, you might have an address defined as physical, okay, that is their physical address. Then it can be set for shipping or billing, or perhaps you might have an alternate address for, um, for, um, for shipping and billing. So, you know, we need to be able to handle that kind of stuff here. So we see, is physical, is shipping, is billing, and is this exact uh, address active? And, uh, you know, it's useful. So um, the relationship between the customer and their address may change over time. So you actually require an, to have an auditable ent entity type, okay, that maintains a customer address history. So we're able to um, to look at this. So it allows things to change over time, and uh, this tells us when this particular instance was created. Okay, so it's a very useful approach to doing and making our design. We have some logical rules, um, essentially coming from our conceptual model that make it into the logical. Uh, the logical um, ERD here, and then we'll make a physical ERD in the next exercise. Okay, so look, there's some good resources on this topic. So if you want to look at the different notations for cardinality, you got to look at this medium article um, uh, or this Vertebello article, and these are the Stack Overflow posts for the, um, the that I mentioned earlier. Okay, that refer to storing a billing address and best practice and so forth. Okay, so we quickly reviewed ER modeling, that's the relationships, the cardinality notation. We saw then how we can put these together to produce an ERD model for our customer address database, and that's based on some business logic rules. And the next lesson now will give an overview of how I created the physical relational database for this design. Thank you very much for watching.